day and welcome. This is our first virtual panel for the 2021 Guam International Film Festival. My name is Miracle Mogol and joining me is my team member Lawrence Lazama as we hold virtual space with the man of our half hour and head juror Dr. Tom Breslin. Dr. Tom Breslin is the retired associate dean of the College of Arts and Humanities at the University of Hawaii, but his broad media career began here on Guam. He received his Master of Arts degree and PhD in Mass Communications and Film at the Ohio State University. His specialty areas include Indigenous film, media ethics, international and intercultural journalism, and mass communication. He was twice a Fulbright Scholar in Germany and has led teaching and research projects in major universities in Japan, China, Paris, and Berlin. Breslin has been a juror for the Hawaii and Shanghai International Film Festivals. He's on the Board of Advisors for Film by Youth Inside and the editorial boards of the journals Media Ethics and Visual Communications Quarterly. Take it away, Dr. Breslin. Oh, half a day. This is uh, Tom Brislin. I'm the head of jury for the Guam International Film Festival, a role that uh, I have enjoyed for a number of years and actually have been on the jury <clears throat> since the inception of GIF. And uh, I'm, I'm proud to make that contribution. I've also thrown a few ideas around in the education and outreach efforts of GIF, helped a bit uh, in the publicity as, as well. So I'm happy to spend some time here to talk about the films in GIF 2021 and shoots. Let's go. Thanks again, Dr. Breslin. So let's get right into it and discuss the best narrative feature, Jung Baru Social Club. Well, I, I uh, particularly in, enjoy theater of the absurd when it's transferred uh, into cinema and when it's done well, uh, as, it, as it was with Social Club. Uh, it, it was a very interesting commentary on, uh, on contemporary life and our quest for happiness and uh, feeling uh, inadequate if we don't uh, if, if we haven't increased our happiness score by uh, some arbitrary uh, level. I, I thought overall in, in the, all of the award categories, there was an undercurrent of family in the themes. And it may be the, the family you were born with, or it may be the family that you make along the way in, in life. And this particular film combined the two. Um, I don't want to give away uh, any spoilers. I don't know if we're, if we're going to be uh, uh, showing this before or after the, the film itself, but it does involve uh, the main character's mother and her living arrangement and the relationship with her neighbors, which forms kind of a family relationship, and the protagonist's uh, relationship in his, his job in this kind of happiness uh, commune that uh, creates a, a family as he, as he goes along and, and his own discoveries. Uh, it has a, just a wild color palette, which is also fun uh, to watch the the cinematography is is great and I think that uh, it it accomplishes what it sets out to and that's very important in a in a film uh, as well. Dr. Tom, can we uh, go ahead and discuss the narrative short category and the winner uh, Georgia along with the nominees as well? Well, Georgia uh, is just an excellently made film. Again, uh, it's, a, it's a family theme, uh, a family in trauma on multiple levels, and the resilience of family uh, throughout that, the attempts uh, at redemption uh, by those who had done the family wrong, uh, the ultimate victory, spiritual victory, uh, at least, of the, of the family itself. It's, it's one of those films that just, uh, I, I think it's a, a half hour long, 
So it's it's kind of like it it's a novella. It's more than a short story and less than a novel. Uh, it's less than a feature, but uh, just right on the cusp of of qualifying as a short film. And oftentimes when I see a short film and I see the running time is more than 16 or 18 minutes, I roll my eyes thinking I'm going to be watching this uh, to see where I can edit things out. Uh, that was not the case in, in Georgia. Every, every scene, uh, every character, every, every line of dialogue, every symbol uh, in it is, is well-placed and, and worthwhile. Uh, some of the other nominated films that, that I really liked, uh, <clears throat> one was called Soon, which uh, brings in uh, themes of, of technology that can both connect us and disconnect us uh, at, at the same time. And uh, I probably reacted to that a, a little sentimentally. Uh, just because of uh, thinking of myself and my kids and, and how when we are at a distance and can only communicate via technology, how it's, again, it's nice to connect, but uh, at, at the same time, it's, it's not true connection. Uh, so I, I did enjoy that one, and it is short. <laughs> it's, quite, it's quite short, but uh, makes its point in a, uh, uh, a very efficient way. Uh, if, if you like uh, a kind of science fiction, uh, Killing Time is the film for you. Uh, mark it on your schedule uh, to, to watch it. No spoilers here, but it has a very interesting uh, uh, twist to it. Uh, and then uh, there was uh, 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 French film, um, and then The Silence, is that the name of it? Yes, and then The Silence, uh, quite good. And then one that will uh, spin your head around a little bit is called uh, Trammel. And it's about a very unusual character. Again, uh, he's, he's alone and his family is, is a created family of a, a clerk in a, in a bodega kind of store that he comes and talks to and talks and talks and talks. And uh, again, very, very enjoyable. I like the way the, that GIF packages these short films together because uh, you can see a, a bunch of them uh, and, and in, enjoy them all in one sitting without having to seek each one out individually. I mean, I guess from there, we'll go jump into your documentary. We could maybe talk about the theme of family more after we go through each winner. Sure. So, um, for the best documentary feature, and we had three nominees for that. We had uh, La Mafa, Sapelo, and We the Voyagers are Moana. And uh, the winner was La Mafa. So what are your thoughts on those in that film and the other two nominees? Well, that that was certainly a tough category because all three were uh, excellent films and all three uh, a, a bit different. Um, the, uh, the voyaging film, I think those who are interested in traditional and celestial voyaging will really enjoy it because it explains it uh, combining animation with live action in a way uh, that's that's quite good. I was I was uh, very Im impressed with that. Um, the uh, Sapello is something that I just I didn't know about at all. I did not know that this community of former slaves that live on an island off of uh, the coast of, of Georgia uh, that are trying to maintain a culture and at the same time uh, maintain ties with the mainland culture. And I think there's some interesting metaphors 
that a, a Guam audience uh, will enjoy. And then on to the winner, I got to be honest, when I first read about it and I said, come on, a film about whaling in, in this day and age, I said, people are going to be up in arms about it. And especially it's, it gets pretty graphic on, uh, on whaling, but I got to tell you, it was just the most compelling film uh, that I had seen. It, it's a film of life and death for the villagers uh, who are traditional whalers, as well as the, the whales themselves. Uh, it is the survival of the, of the village itself. Uh, it, it talks about how this tradition has passed generation to generation, uh, why it is that they can't just give up whaling and you know go buy cans of spam at the at the local supermarket. Uh, life just doesn't exist that way in this particular culture, and and the area is not suitable for agriculture. And uh, again, if you'll forgive me for bringing up the the family. <laughs> theme again. In this one, the whole village uh, is, a, is a family. You, you look at the, you end up seeing the entire village as one family uh, feeding each other. And it reminded me very much of the, of the Hawaiian uh, system where uh, the, uh, you know, those uh, who lived in the, in the upper regions uh, provided the, uh, the taro, uh, and, and other products for those who lived down on the coast who provided the fish and uh, everyone survived out of the, the cooperation of everyone else. And, and uh, again, it's just a, it's, it's a compelling film. Uh, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't be eating too many snacks uh, uh, during it, but uh, other than that, it's fine. Could we just uh, discuss a little bit the winner for the documentary short, uh, Mafia, Lo Mafia Leo, Oteo Lofa, Our Love, and then the nominees, uh, what travelers are saying about Del Muerto? Um, the, what the travelers are saying uh, is, is an interesting film. I, I don't know if, um, and I don't mind a spoiler here, that it took me a while to figure out that what was uh, that the the subtitles on it were what the people were saying and it wasn't the filmmakers saying it and so uh, that caught me just a little a little short uh, but other than that the beginning and end had to do with Native American protesters on the site this is the site uh, which I've been to by the way where the uh, first atomic blast was, uh, who protest because of uh, the ill effects, the ill health effects, uh, but that wasn't explored. And I think if, if that area was explored, uh, it could actually be extended from a short to a, to a feature, and maybe the filmmakers have that in, in mind. Uh, so my vote went to our love, which I thought was a more con complete film and a good documentary gives a voice to the voiceless, uh, lets those be heard who wouldn't otherwise be heard. And I thought that it did a good job doing that uh, for this family who, who gave up life on their own island uh, for the benefit of their, of their son. And again, how everyone adopted, adapted, accommodated uh, to, to a life uh, with their own challenges. And the mom and dad had their own challenges. The son certainly had his own challenges, as well as the, uh, the extended family. And I thought it was, it was done uh, sympathetically, but not syrupy, if that makes any sense. Thanks, Dr. Tom. Uh, now that we've gone through the, the list of winners, um, I guess we could just have a discussion about the festival itself. 
Um, I think I think it, I don't know if it was last year. I know you you helped pull it out that you said that every year, GIF will give a a theme, an overall theme. But there, when you watch all the movies, somehow there's always this underlying theme that comes out. So you've indicated family as that underlying film that you've noticed, and I think. Now that you brought that up, I'm pretty sure both me and Lawrence were like, oh wait, yeah, he's right. <laughs> like, or he is right. Um, so maybe if you could talk about the theme new voices and how you see that kind of either apparent or not apparent with the festival itself, and then kind of lead into how family is kind of what stands out. So sure. Um, well, when you, when you look at, at new voices, what we tend to do when we write a story or film a story is that we film what we know. And what we know, one of the basic things of what we know is family. And when you go to a festival, when you watch films at, at, at a festival, you're not going to see so much plot driven films that you will see in, in the multiplex, because that's essentially what, uh, what generates the, the revenue for the big studios are those that are, that are plot driven. Uh, what we see in, in festivals, and uh, I go to the Berlin International Festival every year, and one of the reasons I enjoy that particular one is that they're character driven films and they're films about relationships and where do our relationships start, but at the family. So you see, I'm, I'm kind of drawing a circle here and, and getting back to, uh, to that main theme. So uh, if, if I were to say that uh, the theme of the films at this festival was relationships, I'd probably be talking about any festival. Uh, because that's the kind of uh, films that you, you see, independent films. Uh, but in this particular case, it just jumped out at me. And also reading about the other films that were not nominees, but are the Made in Marianas films and uh, the other narrative shorts and other documentaries, that there just seemed to be teasing out uh, from underneath the surface this theme of family. And I would imagine uh, that young filmmakers, when they, they want to make films about relationships, draw on, in many cases, their own. And in many cases, that's their family relationships, too. A few of the films were made during COVID, and all of them right now are, are, are um, navigating film festivals during this pandemic. What do you see that's like consistent, like other than good films and and um, like the nature of film festivals? What do you see that's still there despite it being virtual? Well, um, last year's uh, Berlin Festival was was a combination of in person and uh, virtual. The virtual part, it, it happens in February. So I got to like it to go to Berlin in February in the middle of winter. Uh, that part was, was virtual. And then in the summer, they were able to do a lot of outdoor screenings. And just as the Hawaii Festival has done outdoor screenings as well, to, to try to maintain that person to person, uh, albeit social, social distanced. Uh, yeah, COVID has has definitely had its effect. I mean, I've I've talked to filmmakers and film professors, and you know, we we certainly don't want to leave this era pretending that it never happened. We we don't want to make all of our films just okay. Take off the mask. Take three. Put the mask back on. Uh, pretend that that COVID isn't there. Uh, I do enjoy seeing films that reference it and reference the effects uh, that it that it has had on individuals and and on relationships. Um, 
my friend uh, Kim Basford, who was a juror in last year's GIF, her class at Windward Community College in, in Hawaii uh, made a number of films uh, with COVID as the, as the central theme. Let's embrace it. Let's, let's see uh, how it's affecting us in reality and also in a, in a narrative sense. I mean, there were some even kind of sci-fi and dystopian uh, stories that were spun off from the, from the pandemic. And I like that. I, I appreciated that. Uh, a virtual festival, I, was it three years ago, maybe four, maybe, maybe three at GIF, where there were so many entries and so many good films that it was both, that there, there were in-person screenings at the Guam Museum, and there were virtual uh, screenings as well through a uh, uh, a subscriber website. And I think that is, that's caught on. That's caught on at a lot of festivals. And I think we're going to see that continue. Uh, for one thing, when you go to a festival, it's impossible to see every film you want to see. You can't get tickets for it. It's showing at a competing time with another one you want to see, and you have to flip a coin or somehow decide between the two. But if you have the opportunity to go see a, a film at eight o'clock and get back to your home or hotel at 10 and watch another one uh, virtually, well, that's heaven. I like that. I'll pay the premium for, for that. Yeah, so I guess the question I have is, um, what type of stories do you think will be the next trend? Well, I've always encouraged uh, when I've, I've come out for GIF when I was able to up, up to two years ago and uh, talked with students at UOG and uh, students from Saipan who would come over from the, from the festival uh, that there's, there's just a wealth of stories uh, from Chamorro and Filipino and Taiwanese and Korean and every other culture, Holly culture as well, uh, that, that now uh, resides on Guam. And I, th I think we have to tell our own stories because otherwise they're gonna be told to us and not by us. And so they are gonna have bias get see what I did with that wasn't that particularly uh, clever um, you know I mean I've I've written publicly about how the image of Guam the image of Hawaii the image of other Pacific Islands when it's filtered through the the Hollywood lens it's it's very distant uh, it's it's very distorted very disconnected uh, the way we correct that, and, and my friend Chris Ayer, the, uh, the Native American filmmaker who made uh, Smoke Signals, uh, is probably his, his most famous film, he says you, we have to just keep making films. And so that that voice becomes the dominant voice rather than the tropical paradise, you know, sacrifice the virgin and the volcano and all, all the other tropes, uh, you know, that's be it military, be it, um, uh, you know, the, the lazy coconut people, uh, you know, that's, we know there's, there's a half a dozen tropes that we see in every movie about the Pacific Islanders. And, and the way to overcome that is to, is to tell our own stories and uh, make them seen. And the way they're seen is through festivals because I'm not the only one sitting in festivals in Hawaii and Berlin and Seattle and, and Sydney. Studio people are there as well and other filmmakers are there and they get the idea. Uh, you know, Alexander Payne uh, who made The Descendants on Hawaii is probably the studio film that came the closest to telling 
a good Hawaii story from outside Hawaii because he saw a lot of films that were made by Hawaii filmmakers and saw where uh, the the typical the stereotypical trope just didn't work. And it was an original story written by a by a native Hawaiian, which of course was helpful that uh, that was adapted into the screenplay. So you know even if even if we're not making feature length films in the next couple of years, we can be writing screenplays and we can be submitting those screenplays to places like Sundance where people are going to see them. They're, they're going to judge them and they're going to say, oh, here's something I didn't know. I mean, certainly with Shiro's head, that was one of the, the biggest uh, effects that it had was people didn't know Guam. And after seeing Shiro's head, they they knew a, a Guam that uh, certainly wasn't the Visitors Bureau uh, version of of Guam. I guess just thinking of, about what you said, you know, how we should be the ones to tell our stories, and then myself as a young Chamorro filmmaker, I think some of the hesitation was that, like, is our stories going to be uh, worth telling? And that's where the, you know, that lack of confidence comes from and people in my age group where they're not so sure if that's worth telling their story. So what advice would you have to, you know, change that mindset for young indigenous filmmakers? You know, I, I, I heard the, the same thing spoken by Taika Waititi, the, the Maori filmmaker, uh, you know, who has made just a wonderful set of Maori films in New Zealand and now is is making uh, Marvel films and uh, um, uh, vampire films and you know it's a good story can be firmly culturally based but still universal in its appeal. Um, I also point to the uh, Korean dramas on TV. Why are they so wildly popular, not only in Korea, but in all of Asia, in Australia, in Hawaii, in the mainland, and not just in expatriate Korean communities or diasporan Korean communities, but all over, because they touch on universal themes. So yeah, there's an, an indigenous story can have universal appeal if it includes emotions, relationships that are universal, that, that we all feel. And so uh, yeah, you gotta, you gotta dig deep, I think, to find those. I mean, uh, Taika's really made his mark in films about kids. And his, his first films uh, out, of, out of New Zealand were about kids and the relationship of, of kids and adults and adults who, who were not very reliable narrators uh, of, of their own lives. And, you know, that's, I, I looked at his film, Boy, and I said, that's, that's 500 blows. That's Truffaut's 500 blows set in, in New Zealand. Uh, it's, it's the same kind of universal theme, universal emotions and universal relationships. If I say relationship two more times, do I get a prize? I think, I think I've said it uh, so many times now, I'm going to have to come up with a synonym. Ma'am, my next question was, uh... How, how can we, you know, as Indigenous filmmakers, strengthen the relationship between <laughs> the story and our audience? <laughs> but I guess I guess she'll hit that prize then. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it certainly has to be true to your own audience. Uh, you know, you're, if, if you make a, a fake film uh, about Guam, uh, you know, your own audience is, is going to reject it and so you're going to have to go back to, to first base. But 
attracting the the larger audience i um oh well, it's quite a few years ago uh kofik the korean film council uh held a workshop here that i that i helped organize where they brought young korean filmmakers and also some experienced filmmakers from the hollywood system and put them together in, in kind of a, a Sundance relationship of how do you make a film that's going to be both popular in Korea and appeal to a wider international audience. And, you know, it, much of what we've been talking about is, is uh, was the focus of, of discussion that you, you have to find those uh, key beats uh, in in people's emotions and how they get along together <laughs> or don't get along together. Is that a good way of avoiding the R word? Uh, because that's that's what's what's going to appeal. I mean, uh, when you look at at a lot of the uh, Chamorro legends, Lawrence. Um, resilience is a major theme and it's resilience against the elements resilience against the the conquerors uh, uh the over the overseers resilience is a is a universal theme you know it, it carries uh you know all the way into post-apocalyptic dramas you know how we survive uh, that that we are resilient uh so you know i i think that's a that's a strong theme and a strong emotion to tap yes i will be out next year uh at uh, uh gif 2022 covid and united airlines willing no that wasn't your question but. Well, I mean, that was expected. I think you're invited <laughs> here. <laughs> well, it's it's always an honor and a privilege to be on the, the jury for this festival. I, I believe very strongly in it and, and have believed in it uh, from its, its inception that this is just such a unique opportunity to see cinema and world cinema that you're not going to see any place else outside of uh, the festival audience. I love Cineplex movies as much as the next person and with the popcorn and the explosions and car chases and everything else. But the kinds of films that you're going to see at, at GIF, which is just a fantastic festival, are those that this is the only way you're you're going to see them and one of the main differences is uh i i do like the popcorn movies but it's hard for me to remember uh well what was the difference between this marvel version of life and that version or uh this fast and that furious but a lot of the films that you see at the festival stay with you uh, they watch them with someone else because they're going to be conversation starters and they're they're going to make you think and they're going to make you feel good enjoy <laughs>